Hello, welcome back to The Outspoken with your host, Eric Shepard. I am your host, Eric Shepard. Uh, we've been gone for a couple weeks, so we're back. So we've been doing this season two thing, uh, which is fun and I like it and we're streaming. Uh, and I got new gear. I keep buying, we were just talking about it before, I keep buying new gear because I'm an idiot. So if anything's wacky or whatever, let me know. Um, if it sounds weird or looks weird, it's going to look much better in about a second when I bring our guest on. So it was like a freaking sausage fest, you know, this season two thing. And uh, <laughs> my wife's like, you just can't be talking to your boys, man. We had like five guys on in a row, you know. And I was like, yeah, yeah, we need some chicks, man. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were like, chicks, man, well, who? Frick Bree, of course, man. You know, that would be the first we would bring on. So let's bring her on. Let's bring on Bree Hi. Knickerbocker. Look at that. Live. From her home. Oh, isn't that cute? So this Lindsay does like all these like streaming things, They're like fans, and I don't even know what she's on. And uh, so I was watching like some of this stuff on there, and then some of like the the YouTuber girls, and they always say this. They're always like, "Hi guys," that's the beginning of everyone. Hi so hi, hi guys. So hi, hi guys. guys. Hi guys. Am I doing it right? Hi guys. Am I doing it right? Hi, hi guys. guys. Yeah, I love it. Hi guys. So hi guys. For tuning in. So I'm not gonna. Me doing that. Like, is Brianna, Brianna. I don't even know because I only call you Bree. That's <laughs> odd, that's it. So, may I call you Bree? Because I'm gonna call you Bree. You you may. That's all. Yeah, I'm not gonna call you anything else. Um, I've known you for a while now. Long. I don't even remember yeah. when we met. Like many, many, many years ago. It's 2019. I'm trying to think when I, I met, came to New York and. Oh, the you, voices thing. That's like 2011, right? Was it voice? Somebody brought you to the lake house. On Long yeah, Island, yeah. was that, that might have been the first time we met. No, uh, wasn't it like or was voices it or something? It might have. Oh, oh, out in LA at the voice conference. It no, might have it been. was like it. I it was in some random city. I don't remember what city it was in, I but it was. Know. I don't know. You well, you had a buzz. There was like a buzz for a while. Every once in a while, you know, back in the day, the community was like smaller, and uh, so every once in a while, there'd be a town and be like, bzz, 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 and everyone's like, "Oh, you know about this one, and you got to talk, you got to work with this one, and do you know about him, and blah blah blah, whatever." And yeah. uh, I was like, yeah, yeah. So you were like the buzz one for a while. And everyone's like, oh, uh-huh. it's Chick Brebo, you know, whatever. And I was like, oh, whatever. So, <laughs> but you just, you know, you kept like popping up. So you're like, all right, fine. You know, and then, yeah. And then, I thought it was at the late, somebody brought you out, somebody like the the Jersey crew or something brought you out Yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so they'd all be like, oh, yeah, Bree, she's the best. And then they'd either be like, and, are you ready? She's a hand model. That was like the story you would hear. <laughs> Like, isn't that cool? And I was like, yeah, that is freaking cool. That's freak. That's neat, man. Well, it's cool. You know what it is? It's like because voiceover was such a weird thing, you know, and everybody thought like, oh, you're in such a weird industry. And I was like, that's even more niche. Like, what a, that's you know. That's even more weird. Yeah. So that was like everybody's like, that was like their thing. Oh, this is crunchy. Sounds really good. And whatever. Oh, and she, you know, whatever. And there was a guy. <laughs> there was guys. And they'd be like, dude, she's fucking hot too, man. Like, she's freaking, she's oh, my hot. gosh. <laughs> Man, I got stories about that one. You got to meet her, man. She's hot, dude. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you were you were a hand model. You still doing that? Uh, I do it like a few days a year. Not really. <laughs> I am. There's Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. That's your hand. Yeah. Oh, my God. What if... <laughs> that's so insane. I'm dead. Hold on a sec. <laughs> Wait a sec. I got... Check this out. This is what Bree... Yep, that's my hand. <laughs> This, this, I mean, this is good work. I don't know. <laughs> well, even I can tell, this is high quality scan modeling. I'm gonna die. Look at that. That's so funny. How, do, like, it's, that's so freaking niche, man. How did you eat? You started doing that when you were young, right? The hand thing? Know, when did you as start doing that? To you being an old lady now, and now you're retired from everything. What? You settled down in <laughs> Colorado. There's old black and white, so your knuckles. I mean, like, just but I mean, you did, you know, relatively long time ago, I'm you started kidding, doing it, right? But you still, um, okay, I'm going to let you tell the story. But from what I understood, or you told me, or somebody told me, or something, even as, you know, a not child, a just out of childhood, if that's better <laughs> for you. 
but you have small hands. So you weren't, yeah, you know, I'm, obviously you weren't like a freaking eight year old, but you're playing with toys because you have small and they, and they can't use a kid kid. Yes, exactly. Because they can't torture children for 12 hours a day on set. So they have to pay adults to do that. How, wait, how long will you be on set? Oh, well, the best one, I went on set and we had 80 shots on the board and we were there from 9.30 a.m. to 2.30 a.m. Wow. That's what? my longest day. And are I've you ever. like are you like uh, like you're puppeteering kind of? Like are you under a table you're, and doing all kinds of stuff? Yeah, or? like stuff like that and just holding dolls. And it was very character acting-y. So just like their dolls are saying something in a webisode. So you're just pretending like you're saying it. Literally like a nine-year-old girl playing with a doll going like this. Like, <laughs> super, I love you. Like that. <laughs> you're trying so hard to bring it back to voiceover. We're going to get to it. Tell me about this. What was this? I had to find something that was like somewhat embarrassing at least. Oh my God. How I can't did believe- you? That was like the opener. I know, right? Just well, I got to get it out of the way and it's funny. I know. <laughs> so wait, are we doing the whole story with that? Give me the, sto- the, the abridged version. The abridged ber- version is I got to set and it was like some 13 year old boy. And obviously I'm an adult. So I'm like, oh my God, there's like this kid here. Like, why is there this child boy here? And then I'm like pulling his time. This this is so weird. And then the director's like, pull harder, pull harder. I'm like, I'm sorry for hurting you, child, little boy. And then I'm calling my mom and my sister and telling them the story. And they're like, was it Justin Bieber? I'm like, no. And they're like, I bet it's Justin Bieber. And I bet it was a body double. And I was like, no, no. And then six months later, the issue came out and it was Justin. We were all dying. Wait a minute. So it was so him there or it was a double and they stuck his head a, on? It was a double and they stuck the, his head uh, on it. Which kind of adds to the story because it's like, yeah. it's Justin. We bet my mom was so like, it's Justin. 100% it's Justin. It's so funny. Wow. That's your big claim to fame. That was it. You went, <laughs> you've, it? you've gone downhill <laughs> from there. That was your peak. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. That's sad. So you've done. No, I'm kidding. Obviously, you've gotten way bigger than that. But it's just funny, man. Like I said, that was how everybody would introduce you. Now she always oh, a voice. Act. But weird. But did you know? I know. She plays with toys, and they pay her to play with said toys. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's that's even more like interesting than being the voice of the toy, you know? Because it's <gasps> weird. I don't know. It's weird. So, but you do modeling, modeling. So here, yeah. yeah. Yeah, look at this. Oh, look, I got pictures, man. Dang. <laughs> look, boom. My boom. God. Bam. My Ow. God. Ka-chow. You're still doing modeling. Ka-ching. Yes, right? Yeah, yeah, just for fun. I just, I did something recent, like a couple years ago for Jaxi Rexy, but otherwise just for fun, just for Instagram. Yeah, Insta. Doing it for the gram. Hi, guys. I'm on Insta. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, guys. I'm doing this for the gram because I love the gram and I love you. Do you, do you have like a million I followers I don't even know what Instagram? voice this is. I'm just making it up. I like but I'm it. like, oh, I like this. I can to save this for later. You go back. <laughs> we'll go back to the tape later. And be like, I got to use that one. Yeah. Okay. So you've done all these cool things, but now you're a super anime girl. I know you do I'm other stuff, but it's like, I got to I gotta pigeonhole you, you know? Super anime girl. Nice. Hold on. I got video. I've just transformed. Nice. Now I'm super in. I just didn't want anyone to change. No. Oh no, the sound isn't going to play, huh? Not for you. I Hikari to change. Everyone else could hear it, though. Oh. I'm the one who's really changed. (laughs) 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 He's strong. trying to make you humans understand but if the fountain of youth disappears everything in this force will wither and die so give up your quest and leave this place Sela, he's incredibly strong you called her the grail's vessel then you are Ilya's enemy <gasps> sucks that you had to deal with a total shut-in oh <laughs> betty's making a deposit at the spank bank right now thinking of you stop bullying her i just said it yeah I was scared. I 
thought for sure that I was the one who was gonna get picked on next. Well, he is pretty handsome. It's just a shame that he's such a coward inside. Wait, does that mean you two are lovers or something? No, no not, not at, at all. all. That was amazingly synchronized! You really are lovers! <laughs> nice. Nice. I don't know who any of those are. I'm so lame. Well, they're all like animes produced by Bang Zoom. They're the only company. Well, I've done a couple of other ones, but they're the, like the main company that I do voice acting work with uh, in anime. And um, they're all different companies, and then they get released on Crunchyroll. I'm sure. Have you even watched an anime, Eric? No. Ever? Well, yeah. The wife makes me watch. You know, sometimes like we'll be on the couch, and I'm just like, sip, like on freaking Amazon or something. You know, and she's like, oh no, you gotta watch this Shinzo Zap. Zim. No. Okay. Okay, I'm a grown... so I was like, do I have to tell, do I have to teach you what anime is? Yes. An anime. Yes. <laughs> Start from the beginning. <laughs> well, there was a country called Japan. And it blessed us with this secret anime. <laughs> well, here, but that's the thing. No, seriously, how is it? Because most of this stuff, if not all of the stuff that you're doing, has, uh, for the those who don't know, this stuff has already been done. These are foreign. Uh, yes cartoons and then they've been done and then they say well we want to you know have these play in the states or canada or whatever and then was yeah, you know sell these... distribution exactly so then they cast you and now what how does like technically how does this work they bring you into a studio and what happens yeah you don't get the script beforehand uh in the studio you have a video up uh in front of you playing the japanese with a time code and everything like that and then you have a video screen right here and it has your script and the time codes and everything like that. And then um, they'll play you the loop, which could be a couple sentences or one sentence, depending on how far away they are from each other. Like for ReZero in episode 18, I had a loop that was, you know, 10 sentences. It was ridiculous. We had to, you know, break it up into 10 different loops. And we'll preview in Japanese with the beep so you can hear when it's going to come in. And then, uh, then you just go in straight away to record. No, ex no anything unless you need explanation. You don't know the show. It's like the first episode or something. Um, so you hear the three beeps. And then on the imaginary fourth beep, you start recording. And, um, and then if it's too long or too short, sometimes the audio engineer does his Frankensteining magician stuff and tries to fit it in. And if it doesn't, then we just re-record. And it, that's how you do it. And you just like, you just go through it. You're trying to match the flaps. There's not too many flaps yes. in this stuff because of the style, but roughly you're trying to kind shocked. of get it right. You'd be shocked. Mm. Like a lot of times uh, in a lot of different animes, um, there's a lot of moments where we'll even stop and change the script to match a certain flap that looks like an O shape. And maybe the writer that was uh, the script adapter that was writing it from Japanese to English, it'll, the last word will be way. And it doesn't look like the O. So we'll spend a couple extra minutes and change the line to something that ends in an O shape. So it really matches well. It's actually, I know in, um, I don't know how it works in uh, Texas, but here they're like, they're pretty rigorous about it. So, it's so you're referring to uh, Funimation. That does a lot. Yeah, of I'm not stuff. sure. Just because I know they do a lot of simul dubs and I know they have like a really quick turnaround. So I'm not sure how they do it there, but. Uh, I know the way we do it here, we're pretty specific about the lip flaps. So to, very, very, so very So are sadly, you like, insinuating that in Texas somehow we're just lackadaisical about our flaps or how exactly? The f really? <laughs> oh, I'm so thirsty. Let me take a second and that drink water. That mug is bigger than your head. Question. It is. Oh, my God. That's so weird. <laughs> Wait. Okay. It's about the same. Okay. So where were we? Oh, right. You were dissing the great state of Texas. <clears throat> And the voiceover yep. actors who work hard. I was not. I just was That's like, what it sounded like. <laughs> okay. No, the people of Funimation are awesome because I just worked with Jeremy on Easy Kai Quartet and Super Easy Breezy. They have amazing audio technicians that can wizardly fit anything you say into any flops and you never have to do any retakes and it's amazing. That's right. Damn straight. Texas. <laughs> Oh. I'm in Texas now. I got to pretend like I'm Texas. We don't even have a Texas flag. I got to get it. <laughs> the state pride here is like freaking outrageous. So what was your first animal? Was it a lull in the sea? Was that the first? Yeah, that was my very first one. See, I did research. <laughs> How you like me now? I'm very astounded, I think is the, the adjective I'm looking for. When, when was this? When did this start? 
the anime thing? Yeah. Well, let's okay. Um, let's begin at the beginning then, because we I, we always got to do it. And I always apologize for it, but everybody wants it. How did you start in voiceover? You didn't do like the well, radio I, thing, blah blah blah, right? You were no, no, no. you were a hand prodigy, and then what? <laughs> <laughs> I just moved to LA, and I had no idea what I was doing. So I thought I wanted to do fashion, and then I quit that right away. And then I found acting randomly. I was like, this is cool. And then I saw a voiceover job, and I was like, that sounds cool. And I booked it, and it just took off, and it was just crazy. I don't even know what happened. It was all it all happened so fast. It's <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> see the guy. <laughs> yeah, that was so you kind of fell into it. Yeah, yeah, I kind of fell into it. But the funny story with that is that when I was in high school, my sister and I were always uh, doing voiceovers to like Batman and all these shows on TV without even knowing they were called voiceovers or anything. So I think it was meant to be. Hmm. Well, you know, and you have you got the the voice, you know. So you just say, ah, yeah, I could do this. But I never really thought I had the voice. I always thought my voice was super annoying. It's so a I little. Thought... What? <laughs> I never thought I had a nice voice, and I never thought I had nice hands. Nothing. I was just like trying to be lucrative with my career. I was like, well, what else can I make money on? What else can I do? I just loved acting. That was my big thing. Nice. Nice. Okay. So you do, all right. So you're doing the voiceover thing and then what you're doing, like everybody, you're just trying to get whatever you can, cartoons and blah, 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 or commercials or whatever the hell. And no, you're doing YouTube I've, shit or what? I've actually always been, su- even when I was a little girl, super, super, super stubborn. So I just, I've never really tried to do anything that I knew wouldn't make me happy. Um, so I just, uh, I found out really early on that this voiceover stuff that I was booking, I was like, this isn't really my thing because I'm not really getting to act. Cause it was like online stuff, educational videos. I was like, this isn't acting. This isn't fun. I don't get to like cry and scream and have cathartic moments. And you know, yeah, so the, then I was like the last like yeah. IBM explainer that I saw, I didn't have much range. It wasn't very inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was like, well, this sucks. Like, I need to do acting stuff. So that's when I kind of fell into video games. And that's when I uh, went and did the casting director workshop with Mommy at Bang Zoom. And that's how she discovered me. And immediately after doing that workshop, I got called in to do the Lull in the Sea audition. And then I booked that. And then I booked um, Yuki Yuna the Hero, Omega Quintet. Like, everything she sent me, I just, just took off. It was crazy. So you know what? So now we're going to ruin it. For everybody. Uh-oh. But that's the thing, man. That's what a lot of people say. They're like, oh, you got to take these workshops and then you take it and then you get in with somebody and they kind of discover you and whatever. And other people say, I've been to like 47 workshops and that never happened to me. It's not true. And it's because they suck, yeah. right? They are kind of casting at these things. They're looking to see who's there, right? <laughs> I mean, like, it's also like maybe you love acting, but maybe what you're going to get paid to do is commercials. So you just have to know how to interview your buyers as Bonnie Gillespie says, and know what you're, you know, so like you just put yourself out there and see like, oh, I'm booking audiobooks or, oh, people really seem to love me in anime. And that's how you know, like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So then you just follow more of that. See, I've done these workshops before and they bring me in. I was talking to somebody today too. We're going to do another one. And they're like, voiceover agent guy, blah, blah, blah. And then people come in, they, you know, they do their whatever. And they're always thinking, oh, I'm going to impress this guy. Mm. And then, you know, he's going to rep me. But usually they're students. And I'm like, yeah. you know, it's listen, you could be amazing, but I can't rep you because you don't know what you're doing, man. You know, you just started. Yeah. So, but you, like I said, there's, it's not like a super debate, but I've heard it debated back and forth. But for yeah. you, it was true. You went to a workshop thing and you kind of got discovered there and, or you got brought targeted, into the fold. Yeah. It was a targeted yeah. workshop. Like I wasn't just flinging spaghetti at the wall. I had done voiceover for like a year or two. I'd, I'd been acting since I was a little girl, even if it's just stupid little shorts that I filmed on my phone. I view that as like putting in towards my 10,000 hours. And I knew that I wanted to do anime and I knew that I could do little girl voices. So it was a targeted, uh, you know, casting director workshop. Okay, so you do a lull in the sea, and then you do a bunch of other things I've never heard of. Yeah. Because I'm not, because I'm, it's not that I'm not cool. I'm extremely cool. It's don't, not that I'm listen, not cool, don't, but I'm not watching anime cool. Listen. Which d- is a whole new level of cool. Don't let the minivan fool you. I'm very, I'm very, 
Very cool. Now, I'm just 100,000 years old, man, so I don't know this stuff. But correct me if I'm wrong here. REM is the big thing for you. Yes, ReZero, that's like, role, that's your big yeah. whatever. Tell us about that. For anime, that's like the biggest, I would say the biggest role, yeah. So that's what you're known for. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you originated this role. You're the first American actress in this role? Yes. All right. Tell us for how sure. you got that. Um, okay, so... This is through the mommy, same company, though, that you've been working with, right? Yeah, yeah. So Mommy at Bang Zoom, she sent me an audition for Ram and Rom, nobody else. And um, then Kaylee messaged me on Facebook, and she was like, did you get an audition for uh, ReZero? And I said, yes, I did. And um, so we both were kind of freaking out. And she told me it's like a huge, 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 huge show. So I was kind of really freaking out. But I was like, nope, not going to look up, it, look it up online. Not going to freak myself out. Um, and then I did the auditions, sent them in. And then I looked up the show online because I was stupid. And I saw how huge it was. And I started psyching myself out like this is the only thing. I started doing like the crazy praying. The crazy praying is when you're like, this is the only thing I ever want. I won't do anything else after this. This is the only thing I'm ever going to ask for. <laughs> it's just like the crazy praying. And um, I think like two weeks later, I got the email that I booked it and I lost my mind. I was screaming. I was crying. I was laughing. I was just running across my house back and forth and back and forth. I was calling people and people were freaking out. And then um, Kaylee and I talked and I found out she got Amelia and we were both freaking out. And it's very exciting. Fine. So, <laughs> all right. So you go in an audition. Are you influenced by the original actor, by the original voice? Do they want For somebody sure. that sounds like it? Are they saying, yes. you know, listen, the one in Japan is actually a deep-throated dude. We want to go in a different direction. Or are you listening to the original and saying, let me try to nail that? Or are you just like, I got to be brave? I'm definitely trying to nail the Japanese, but, you know, putting a, obviously me on top of that, but with the Japanese voice, trying to emulate that as well as I can. Um, but sometimes, uh, like in the case of Shenwa for uh, Shenmue 3, Yu Suzuki was very, very clear and, you know, kind of said it 10 times while I was in front of him that they do not want me to sound like the Japanese actress and they do not want to sound like the Japanese actress. They want Shenwa to be strong and they don't want how the Japanese was a little bit too emotional and too girly and they didn't want that. So it's it depends on the project, I guess. But usually I just try to emulate and then put me on top of that. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, that makes it easier, too, because it's yeah. you, you know, especially when mm -hmm. you say you're there matching flaps for God knows how many hours, you know. The yeah. Shinmu <laughs> thing, that's new, right? That's yet to come out. Yeah, that's yet to come out. That's like a 17. I think people have been waiting 17 years for this game. So it's kind of a big deal. Very excited. Uh, very exciting. I think uh, it was literally crowdfunded by all the fans on uh, Kickstarter. So it's very, very, very exciting stuff. I'm very honored to play her. Listen, it was pretty slick how you put that that <laughs> plug in out of nowhere. Just segued. <laughs> I was going to set you up for it anyway. <sighs> God dang, man, you're, you've done this before. So, <laughs> okay, so yeah, drink out of that huge mug. What are you drinking? Whiskey? What's in there? I'm reading the comments, too. We'll bring them in. Holy crap, man, you got fans? We've done this show. We're like big, stink, whatever, Hollywood, you know, and like nobody asks them anything. And then we went out on the socials and we're like, we got Brie on the thing. And like 8 billion fans came out with all Aww. kinds of questions, man. Wow. I love you guys. Wow. wow. Popular. Holy <laughs> cow. So speaking of popular. Yeah. So we've discussed this before on the show. Anime. And we love it. And thank you to the anime gods and you would never talk bad about it or whatever. But it pays freaking dismally. It's awful. Yeah, yeah, we're there's definitely a coalition uh, that I'm really, really excited to talk about um, going on in uh, Texas and in Los Angeles. And we're working with the Guild and we're working to raise standards uh, in the booth, outside of the booth, rates, all of that. Um, yeah, there's some disparity on 
what people view as dub actors like Netflix and things like that and um, how hard it actually is. You That's, can't just pull somebody off the street and have them do an anime. That's You'll, the thing. Yeah. We discussed this before too, but I'll bring it up again because I, it's my show. It, it pisses me off and it's the same thing with video games because it's so difficult and it just blows out your cords, man, like crazy. You know, it's not like, hey, I just did an anime session and now I'm going to do a commercial or whatever. Like, you're yeah. done, man. You know, you did your four hours or whatever. Um, and then the pay is terrible. And they're making like a zillion bucks off this stuff. So not mm-hmm. all the anime stuff, you know, they're making is, but the video games especially. I mean, they're making, you know, a billion dollars with a B like the first day it comes out. And then that's why, you know, as an agent, I don't really touch it much. And the agents don't really touch the anime stuff either because like what am i gonna get 10 percent of your fuck 300 bucks an hour or whatever you know um well the yeah, way i do not it cool, is man I, but that's like, the, i'm not asking you to be like oh yeah it's yeah. because you don't want to talk you know you're not going to bite the hand that feeds you obviously mm-hmm. but it's it's just odd because you know like you said it's not commiserate with the with the work you know with 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 what's being done and the the level of uh of talent that's needed yeah, I mean, I'd also just say that everybody just loves anime so much. I just, it's not that I'm doing it, like, biting the hand that feeds me. Like, I love anime so, so, so much. And I would rather do anime than anything else in the world. Um, so the that's the problem. You love doing it so much. And everybody else loves doing it that much. So you have people that are willing to t- accept lower rates. And um, you just, it, you just there's, we're like in a... Uh, a loop and we can't get out of it well you know it's the same thing with all the voiceover but right you know other voiceover commercial stuff that used to pay a mint i mean we were all friggin' rich you know and then that's yeah. then out of nowhere the past couple of years has started declining but this yeah. anime st- and the dubbing stuff has never paid well i mean it's you no, guys sure. you know it started yeah, okay. at the basement um you know sort of try to go up from there but heck, yeah. who knows but everything else um, you know, commercial work is, it's, you know, it's the same thing. It's everybody and their brother wants to do it. And you have the yeah. jerk off, well, you know, I'll do it for five bucks, man. I don't care. Yeah. It's, it's scary stuff. So. Yeah. But you love it, whatever. But so the money is not in the actual doing it. It's usually it's in, uh, you know, the appearances and stuff. So you want like the, the circuit on the, doing mm-hmm. the cons and stuff. Yeah, I, I wasn't really into it before, but I just recently like got super into it. So I have, um, I just did AX, and then I um, I'm doing Animanga the first weekend of August in Pomona, and then Otaku Fest in Miami at the end of August, and then Colossal Con East in Pocono Mountains, Pennsylvania, in mid September. And my other ones are not announced, and I'm not allowed to talk about them. Ah, uh, who's booking you on this? You working with somebody? Um, I pr- I have like probably six or seven different con agents, and then a lot of them actually the cons just uh, email me directly, so I just handle them myself. Yeah, yeah. All right. So how? So you just did AX? That was a, like a huge one, right? AX is crazy. I think they have like one hundred twenty five thousand people there. Holy crap! So yeah, it was it was bananas. All right. So roughly, what it was are a you, lot of fun. You were there what a weekend, two days. No, I was just there. I just did one autograph signing. I think it was like an hour and a half on Saturday, and that was it. It's just so the crowds are so crazy. I just I couldn't do it. And what what can you make like on the the high end? What could you make? In a, you know, on a weekend or one day at a con? Um, it depends. I think if you're somebody super super <laughs> experienced, um, you could probably make you know more than a few grand, maybe. What? How it much depends. does it cost oh, me I'm to get your sorry. autograph? Uh, well, at AX, we were doing $20 per, and then if you buy, uh, something like with your personal item or a print, then we would do pictures for 10 on top of that. Like on your phone, like a selfie? Yeah. Where you go, hi guys. Hi. Hi. How do you? (laughs) (laughs) Wait, I wonder if we could do this together. Wait, wait, wait. Oh God. Now it's like mirror image. No way. That's. Like left is right. Idiots. These dopes. I paid good money to see this show. (laughs) And these dopes are making it hard. So all right. So good. So you're on the you're on the circuit now. I told you it's gonna get free you know, I turned off the AC in here. Are you dying? Yeah, man. I'm in Texas. I don't know how you're doing it. Freaking hot I'm turning it back on. I got the smart thermostats in the house. I got all the smart lights and all that stuff because I'm cool. That's so fun. Do you forget? I was telling you before. I'm cool. 
Oh, I, I remember. I didn't think you were going to make it. No. So I, had five, I had five bucks on it. If it sounds weird, all you folks that are here live, let me know if you could hear the air conditioner on and I'll turn it back off. Where was I? Cons. Nice. Cons. You get any problems yeah. with the kind of uh, creepier aspects of the fandom when you're at the cons? I will just take this moment, this opportunity to say that I have literally the most incredibly heart forward, sweet, kind hearted, supportive, passionate fans ever a girl could ever ask for. And I'm so, so thankful. I've had no issues with any creepers at all. Nice. I feel very, very, very lucky. And I love all my fans so much. Yeah, that's a tough one. You got to be careful. So you've been lucky. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Good. Good. They give you all security and that kind of stuff with those things anyway, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. They give you yeah. hand they give you a handler that kind of helps right, you. Right, yeah, a handler. The yeah. yeah. And then you get what? A sandwich? What do they, what do they give you? A per diem? <laughs> yeah, what's they, what's they, it what's craft services? What do you get? Cold so, cuts? Well, they have like a green room <laughs> that's in there and stuff, and they do have a per diem, but your handler's like such oh my god, it's so nice. Usually they're the like sweetest human beings too. And um, they'll take you out to like whatever restaurant you want to go to or anything like that. So it's really nice. Nice. Okay. You do video games too. You were talking about this Shenmue thing. Lots and lots and lots of video games. How many games have you done? I think games are my highest booking ratio. Uh, And then right after is anime. Really? So you're a bigger game person than an anime person, you would say? I guess so. But I love anime. I would not have a problem with being a bigger anime person. (laughs) Well, you heard it you here can't first. You book everything. Well, listen, if you weren't talking shit about Texas, maybe they would have hired you more, but you had to start a war. <laughs> oh, my lordy. Oh, my God. So what's up? So you like the tough stuff, man. What's with the... Um... I love the Yeah, because video oh games are gosh. tough, too. How did you get into that? Um, That was actually before anime. Really, really funny story. Um, I was, like, on Craigslist because I, that's where I was finding some of my modeling jobs. And I saw a job for like a big video game and I um Listen, the title if, we, if we could just put a disclaimer, <laughs> don't game. take a modeling job off of Craigslist because that guy might stab you and leave you in a dumpster. Yeah. Don't please nobody reference <laughs> for God's what I did. Sakes. Please. Oh my God. <laughs> I did what Brianna Knickerbocker said she and t- I went on Craigslist and then I got murdered. <laughs> she told me to, Mom. Oh yeah. my God. Everybody oh. blame Bree. <laughs> All right, so you're on, you're on Craigslist looking for yeah. looking for massage jobs. Oh, do you want to do you want to laugh your butt off? I have the best Craigslist story ever, the best Craigslist cra- casting story. Okay. This this is the size of my lady watermelon balls. I got lady size like watermelon balls. <laughs> so, I was on Craig this is when I was first starting out and I was like, how do I how does I how do I do it? So then I saw a casting. It was like it said uh, looking for a British voice for an audiobook. It was like two lines, and that was the whole casting on Craigslist. And it said, call this number. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so I'm like crazy. So I like called and it went to voicemail. So like legit, no joke. I was like, hello, this is my name is Brianna Nickabaka. And I'm calling about the casting. Here's my number. Thanks. <laughs> and then I got a call back. And I didn't know if I should keep up the British accent or not. So uh, I was like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? So then I was like, hello? <laughs> <laughs> and I kept up the accent. And then she was like, we love we love you and we want to bring you in. It's for Random House. So I was like, shit. So it was like a real thing. It was a real big thing. So, well, and now you're screwed because now you now you got to see how good your accent really is. So then like, I, well, I, oh, I governor. Had to, <laughs> so I had to go in. So I was like, do I keep doing the British accent or do I not? So I was like, okay, okay, this is too much. So I just went in there without my accent. I was like, hi, this is this is Bree from the phone. <laughs> and um, I booked the job and they kept my voice without the British accent. Oh, really? They said, forget it, we won't do the Brit then? Yeah. Is that wild? That is weird. That's like my funny, I feel like that's the funniest casting story I will ever have. Like, it'll never get funnier than that. You're still trolling Craigslist for casting? No, no, (laughs) no. That's how bad it's gotten. (laughs) 
in voiceover. Oh my god! Freaking Fiverr. Good lord. Oh. Okay, say, so don't where? Say the F word. We were talking about something. Oh, video Not games. Video games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So video games. So you do a million video. Yeah. So how did you yeah. get started in video? Ga- oh, that's a. You were telling a Craigslist story, and so. Yeah. I so I rudely cut you first. off. Oh no, 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 that's totally fine. I br- I think it was my first video game role ever, and it was a title character. Um. And I was like, and I was recording for like 16 hours. It was super intense, crazy, crazy amount of acting. And I was like, this, this is what I'm supposed to do. Wow. I love the rough stuff. Oh my gosh. So, hello. So that was, that was it. It was your calling. Yeah. Oh, for yeah. sure. You know, when you know, you just like have that feeling. No. I feel like life is so, <laughs> life is so much more simple than you make it out to be. I feel like the best career advice people can have is just like, Follow whatever makes you curious. Like whatever that feeling is that you're like, oh, I like this. This is this feels good. Time doesn't exist when I'm doing this. That's the thing. Just follow whatever that is. And even if that's not what you're supposed to do the rest of your life, that's what you're supposed to be doing right now. Yeah. You know? I used to feel that way about voiceover. And then I met yeah. all these voiceover people. <laughs> not, not, not including Pre- current company. Present company excluded, of course. Yeah. God damn. No, I... 40 freaking years or however long it's been later. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. I'm freaking out of But that's the anymore. thing. You can totally change what you're supposed to be doing in life, and that's what's so exciting. No. I don't know how to do anything else. That's why I'm still in voiceover. I'm stuck. <laughs> I literally cannot do. I can't tie my own shoes, for Christ's sake. I don't know how I wipe myself. Uh, well, that's it. That's all. That's all I can do. Yeah. You should definitely learn how to tie your shoes. I I'm a, that's why I got married. Oh, uh, well, there you go. You had to cook for me. I don't know what I'm doing. Please. <laughs> I'm helpless. <laughs> okay, so, like I said, nobody, you got fans, man. Nobody ever submits questions before. Anybody who's with us live, uh, if you got questions, hold off. And then you can stick them in, and then we'll pull them into the thing and whatever. Here, watch. Like, I could do a cool thing. Thank yeah. you. So, if you got questions, we'll pull them in. But... We got questions yeah. off of the, the Twit Twat Tweetier. Oh, yeah. There's so many from Twitter. Oh, my well, God. Well, I didn't grab all of them because it's crazy. No, no, for sure. Yo. We could be here all day. Yeah. Well, and half of them, I didn't know what the hell they were talking about because I just like some <laughs> ra- <laughs> a random like, language. Um, and the what? Yeah, but I was like, well, listen, why not let these people do my job for me? Yeah. I love it. Okay. Mando Tellers. How did you discover anime? Were you a fan of anime before doing voice work? We discussed that. Yes, you loved it. Where have you been? Oh, this was submitted beforehand, so we can't give him any crap. What else? Tai Dang, how do you know what and when audition opportunities are available? She, Craigslist. <laughs> oh, my God. The frequency of auditioning per day per week. You're auditioning all the time, right? How do you keep your voice? This is a good question. Part I like part two. How do you keep your voice healthy? And for the vocal rest, can you elaborate on that? Are you a heavy cigar smoker, or how does that work? You know me with the cigars. You could definitely tell from my skin around this area that I smoke about five a day. <laughs> um, but besides the cigars, I digress. Um, I just drink lemon water, and I try not to blow out my voice, but it's really tough. I definitely feel like my voice has changed over the past few years because I'm not really good at using my voice correctly. I don't use the diaphragm all the time, so I'm speaking from my throat. So I'm constantly damaging my voice, and especially with all the harder uh, video game roles I've been doing. I do a lot of, like, the trend in video games right now is that the female characters are getting stronger and stronger and more equal to men. So the voices I'm having to use are, like, super rough, super strong. Um, so I'm not like the best person to ask for this. I'm like, yes, I want to know the answer too. <laughs> yeah. You got to get out of your throat, man. That's not I good. Know, I'm, I'm so bad. I've yeah. had probably three times over the past, like few years where I've lost my voice completely and I couldn't talk for a week. It was horrible. Well, yeah. Especially when you're, you know, a voice actor. <laughs> oh, it was horrible beyond all reason. No, no words. So no you words. put yourself on like vocal rest. You, yeah, you have to, like I did this, um, I'm not allowed to talk about it. I did a really vocally stressful thing and it just blew out my entire voice. And, um, that's the thing. You also have to like protect yourself in a session. And, you know, I think lately I've been better about that. Um, but 
you know, when you're starting out, you don't know how to stand up for yourself, especially being a girl. It's a little bit harder. Uh, you just want, you want to, you're a people pleaser and you want to do the job well, of course. So you have to do the scene over and over again when you're screaming like five times when really you should speak up and say, I've only got one more of these in me. You know, I have sessions tomorrow. I'm really worried about my voice. I'm feeling it. I'm really worried. Can we take a 10 minute break? Maybe can we spread this out over the next uh, few days since it is such an extreme vocally stressful situation? So it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll be like, man, what's happening? It got real like quiet around here. And I'm like, Lindsay, what's up? And she's like, what? And she's like, she's like, I'm, like, I'm trying to be on vocal rest. I'm trying to say my voice. And it lasts like 12 minutes. And then she's like, blah, 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 blah. It's but that's hard. it. It's if it's so quiet for like 12 minutes, that's Lindsay's vocal rest. And then she's done. No, it's so hard. Yeah, it's, I know. And so like I've had to do it for a week straight, like three times over the past few years. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Like unbearable. Well, we're voice people. We talk a lot. It's just what we yeah, do. We don't I shut up, you know. It's so painful. Yeah. That's what, that's what I love, like, when we, we just got, like, the voice conventions and stuff. It's just, like, a, it's just like hundreds of actors, like, trying to get oh a God. word in edgewise. Like, nobody, no one's ever just pensively, like, mm-hmm, tell me more. Yeah, like, I hate that. I'm not into that. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. freaking yaps and yaps, man. Yeah. All right, what do we got? That was this. Oh, Kenton Barks here. Who talks like that? I and love I, it. And I'd like to humbly ask this question. How crazy was it to play Rem when she unleashed her devil trigger against the... Really? Vicious mob beast. Yeah, right. right In front of Subaru. It's not Subaru. 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 They're not going to hire me for any of this stuff. On their rescue mission to save the village children, Mather's Manor. Did you catch that? I did catch that. Okay, I don't know what it was meant. like. It was one of my favorite moments ever. I think I'll ever have in my entire life. I like feel like a little bit of tears even like back here. They're coming, Ugh, because I had because I'd already been cast as Rem. So before I'd come in to record the show, I had watched it in Japanese and I knew what this episode was. I knew this was when she was going to go like towards when she was going to go into demon mode for the first time, and um, oh. When we got to that episode, I was like, all the feels. I was like, yes, I get to be Demon Rem. This is it. Let every moment last an hour. Please, I don't want this to ever end, ever, 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 ever. Oh, it was just incredible, indescribable. You're, all the heart, all the feels. You're so funny. Oh. I love this girl. Any fun, Henry Eason, any fun or so moments you had when voicing... Philo, 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 and ri- like the dough, in <laughs> Rising of the Dough, and anything you like about her. Thank Philo. you, Henry. <laughs> Thank you, Henry. Um, of course, every moment with Philo is freaking hilarious and fun. Have you watched the show? <laughs> she is like a ball of energy and just ridiculous. And anything she would say to Master was just, oh my God, she had just like all the funny little quirks and moments and the, oh my God, the sassy moments with Ralph Talia, especially the one like at the strawberries or whatever kind of, you know, Resident Shield hero world berries they were. Um, Just all the little sass she had. I love her so much. And I'm like, come on, Crunchyroll season two. Just say it already. We know you want to say it. So just say it. You start getting this stuff confused. Like you do one and then because some of the some of them are a little similar and then you're like one and then some of them you probably did a while back. Do you get like, wait, what? With the video games, sometimes because I do so many mobile games and not all of them are triple A games, um, but not with anime. Yeah. What do we got? Actually, oh. I can't really say that because the know your role thing, I couldn't guess any of my characters. What? They played like. They played audio clips of me doing my character voices, and I had to guess which characters I was doing, and I couldn't guess any of them right. <laughs> so, yeah, but did you I get video? You was just well, like I guess if you lie. got video, you would know it was just audio. <laughs> so many of them sound the same, though. What you get? Not that you know. Not that I'm saying you're a one trick point, but that's just how the sound that they want. How we? It's so, unfair. Yeah, and the thing is, like, I I do get typecast as the same type of character a lot, and I do tend to use the, a similar voice. You know, uh, first a lot of characters. So 
to me, they do kind of end up sounding a lot alike. So it's hard for me. Okay. Here's the last one from Twitter. Just because I thought it was funny. Who do you think is cuter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You're, like, loving this. <laughs> it's oh, my God. You, like, love this. You're dying. Seriously. Seriously, who's cuter? Who's cuter? I don't know. I thought it was funny. All I think right. Rem is the cutest. Rem is a cute. Well, yeah, because that's your she's biggest draw. So it's kind of. She's Rem. I you did just see. Can't compete with Rem. You know what? I saw some Rem stuff. Like I said, I was looking to get some video. I was going to put it on here, but it was yeah. that stuff was like under lock and key, Water. man. You yeah. Know? But it's some crazy. folks. You know what? And I I stumbled across some of the Japanese. You know the original. Yeah. And you're not far off. Yeah, I'm pretty. I matched her pretty pretty closely, but she she's a different actress, and she has her own. You know, you just bring in your own personality and it's going to sound different stronger no what. i think you came you come across as strong mm, vocally and and every that the original seemed a little more you know mm. had a more breathier timid kind of thing mm, um mm-hmm. but maybe that's a thing you know maybe they you know strengthen yeah. them for the american market all right let's take some more questions anybody that's here demon mode was amazing blah 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 Rem is totally the cutest anime girl ever. She is. There's just no doubting it. There's no questioning it. Yeah, here's one. How did Brie get into character for playing a bird girl in Rising of the Shield Hero? So, <laughs> for Rising of the Shield Hero, Mommy sent me Roth Talia and Philo. So I got to audition for both. And for Philo, the only scene in the audition was her, like, take, uh, drawing the cart, and she's doing the song. So I was like, who is this little random bird girl, and why in this audition? It must be some random minor character, because all I'm doing is singing. And then I booked it, and I was like, oh, my God, Philo's so big. So it was just hearing the Japanese voice and then just being sassy and adorable. How, how often do you have to sing? Um... And are you happy or are you like, oh, shit? Very rarely, but I would give anything. Like, my dream is to book, like, an anime or a video game character where I actually really get to sing. That would be absolute dream come true for me. Because, you know, I'm doing Starless and all my music stuff now, so I love, love, love singing. Oh, you're doing, like, singing. Dang, I should have gotten some video. Lindsay shows me stuff. This My wife is awesome. And she... (laughs) My wife and Brie are like friends. And she'd be like, we oh, are. and she's always on social media and she knows I hate that stuff. So she's like, oh, check out this one is doing this or that one's doing that. It's like, look at this freaking Brie's like a damn pop star. I was like, what? <laughs> and she show me some stuff. She's like, oh, look, Brie's on the pole. I'm like, thank you. That was nice. Show, <laughs> like, show me this random stuff you're putting Timing. out there. Hello. Yeah, I know. It's nice. But uh, yeah, she's like, what is she? I, I don't know. What's the, what's the singing thing? I should have gotten a freaking video. I just love, you know, that's something just like anime um, that I always avoided because I was terrified because it was something that I think was like bigger than me. You know, I had all these self-limiting beliefs and all this stuff. So it's just something I've always, always, always wanted to do. And I finally was able to grow enough and snap out of my self-limiting beliefs and grow enough to allow myself to pursue it. So I have a couple songs out um, that are, you know, collabs with producers. Um, my first solo artist song is coming out very soon. But I'm just building that from scratch right now, just like how I did with my voiceover career. What is, you know, we were talking a bit about this with Lofty Fulton a couple weeks mm-hmm. ago. And I, and it's it's a common thing with actors. There's always this like what? imposter syndrome thing where you think like, oh, oh I can't do that. So no, true. I couldn't do that. Why? Maybe just because actors are just so beaten down all the time, you know, it's just part of the. I don't know. It's part of the gig, you know. It's you so have to bad. audition a hundred times to get one job, so you just get yeah. used to being, uh, you know, rejected. But I guess you know a lot of folks, you just internalize it, or um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it really is. yeah. You know, it's weird too because people see actors, oh, and they're so full of themselves, and I wish um, I had that kind of confidence to just go out there and be some, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's and, not uh, confidence. Yeah, it is, no, it it's fu- it's mental freaking illness is what it is. I'm telling <laughs> people, 
voiceover people, any actors, there's something wrong with you that you didn't just get a day job uh, and you're doing this wacky, like, make-believe stuff. It's cra- it's crazy. It's a crazy it's thing to so do. It's so fun. It's just like this. It's weird Passion for for being in an imaginary world and um, bringing characters to life. I think it's like a high empathy. Like you want to tell people's stories and you read this care about this character and you get so excited to empathetically identify with that character. And you want to imagine what that's life and feel what they feel and tell their story. Because like for me, we'll just take Walking Dead as an example. It's like my favorite show ever. I like cry every episode. I get so into it, so enmeshed in and meshed in it. And you feel what the actors are feeling and you feel like those characters are real and it's very cathartic. And I think it's, it helps people when they go through trauma and maybe they have a tough day or any level of trauma, whether it's bad day or you've lost somebody or something more serious, you know, it's very cathartic and it helps you process through your own feelings. And if I can do that for other people, I don't know. I just feel very called to do this emotional, hard, rough stuff. And I want to give that to other people, those cathartic experiences and help people. It's, yeah, it's just weird. It's it's a weird, and I think that's why a lot of us hang out and why mm-hmm. like a lot of, uh, you know, actors and voice it, like, actors start it? dating and yeah. marrying other voice actors and stuff. Like it was weird when me and Lindsay were together. And then it was like, there's like 10 other couples that are like, mm-hmm. because the norms, you know, like they don't understand, like, Oh, it's midnight. I have to do an audition. Like what? No, people don't do that. Yeah. You know, we do. Um, Mm -hmm. I've actually never dated an actor, by the way. Never. Really? You like the norms? I don't know why. I've always dated guys with like nine to fives and stuff. Isn't that weird? I wonder why. Yeah, it is weird. Yeah. I'm wondering why now. Uh, Yeah. I think it's so much. Yeah. Like I'm always like, oh, thank God. Like I found somebody in the business because like they can't. That's what my girlfriend says. She's with, yeah. they're both in the movie industry and they're like writing, directing, self-producing. And she says it's like being with somebody that really, really understands you. And it's, it sounds amazing. It <laughs> is, man. Well, I mean, voiceover just as a subset of acting has its own weird stuff, you know, being, like, being sure. locked at oh home gosh. and dealing with your boots and your microphones and all your weird stuff, Absolutely. you know. So it's it's such a, uh, you know, as much as it's it's out now more in the public uh, imagination, you know, it's still a really oh. weird and a, and an insular kind of thing. So I, you know, I think that's what, um, you know, kind of, for sure. you know, makes us bond together. But then, but I think even before that, it's just that yeah. there's something freaking weird, man. We're just weird folks that, that do this. Um, yeah, I don't know what that, you know, what that calling is. And there's so many people, know. Oh, I'd love to be an and actor. I think, and I think a lot of folks just never try it. You know, they never, it never seems attainable. But that's like what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Well, I never really wanted to pursue singing or something because it wasn't attainable until you get to a, well, that's you know, the thing. Like, it was like not, it was not attainable because in my spirit, like, I don't know if you've ever read um, The Big Leap. No, I, I can't it, read. It's like you're, you think you see yourself in this level, like whatever level of spiritual growth that you're in, depending on the level of trauma that you've had as a child, depending on, you know, nurture versus nature, whatever percentages those are, but you see yourself as this level, you can't see yourself as a higher level. So if your dream, your calling is at this higher level, you will sabotage it any chance you get. Like if you think you're, you've low, low self-esteem and you're just not worthy of anything and you get this boyfriend that's incredible and treats you really, really well, you'll sabotage it because you haven't done the work on yourself and you're at this level. Until you do the work on yourself and you grow and you become who you're supposed to be, that's when you can go to those higher level things. It's really, it's very spiritual and I really, really believe in all that. So what? So to have any sort of level of success, you have to get your shit together. That's what you think. Not successful because your story could be uh, what needs to teach you about a moment is uh, that you are extremely successful and you get millions of dollars and you're miserable. So then you learn that you know money isn't everything. It depends on whatever your personal story is and whatever the universe needs to teach you, whatever lesson you need to learn. And it'll come in any form whatsoever. But whatever it is, whatever is in front of you is there to teach you something. Yeah, you know, it's always that money thing too. And everybody, oh, well, you know, once I'm get it, once I'm comfortable or what, but you're never comfortable. I mean, you never get where you're like, that's enough. Like I got Especially enough. Nobody says like, I have enough money. 
Well, yeah, yeah. because you got to be freaking rich just to have like a house, you know. So crazy here. Oh, my God. I don't know how anybody does it. It's so wild. Yeah. We, you know, we had thought a couple of years ago, I said, oh, maybe we'll maybe go out there and yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. That's. We are already in Texas. How are you it's not dating totally actors not. in L.A.? You can't, you're tripping over them, for Christ's sakes. They're everywhere. I know. I've avoided it very well. Yeah, purposely, huh? I don't know. I just, it never really appealed to me. I feel like I'm the one that has, like, the crazy uh, schedule and everything like that. So it'd be, it's nice to be with, uh, like, I'm like a cloud, and it's nice to be with a brick. Somebody that's secure, right. safe. Somebody that helps keep me grounded. Grounded. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's probably better because it's Give freaking... me stability. Yeah. I crave like that in my life because I don't have any of that. No, there's no stability here. It's mayhem. It's like mm-hmm. 18 hours a day of voiceover and then mm-hmm. the kids. And it's always the hustle and it's always, yeah. it just, it's never ending. So I just, I don't know. I like having that stability. It's kind of nice. Yeah. All right. What time is it? We're going to let you wow, go. Wow, we are we blew through an hour. I know. You were like, oh, uh, how so long fast. are we going to be on the thing? I know. You could bullshit for like three hours. That's yeah, a thing. Yeah, crazy. All right. That was so much. Yeah. In lieu of payment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to what? Give you the opportunity to plug away. Plug, 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 plug. I know you Lunch. said you were, you mentioned a few things, but it, everything's freaking nda right? Do you have anything you could plug besides the Shenmue 3 thing? Hmm. I will say that at the end of August, I have like two huge, 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 huge announcements. Um, and you I heard it here first, folks. She's <laughs> announced officially is. that soon there will be an announcement, which will be <laughs> on another show. Eight huges. <laughs> and they're like eight huges. Like, that was... That was the you know. big get that we got this show. That something will be coming somewhere else in a few weeks. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Okay, so things are so good. So you've got things coming up. What else? Oh, how do, uh, you mention your cons. Mention them again. Where can people see you? How can they see you? How can they get a signed? I'm sure that something. all these people are like following me already, but I I put oh, all my contacts on Twitter and Instagram. You guys already know, know me, Brianna Noel K on Twitter and Brianna Knickerbocker on Instagram. Hey, how do you do that thing with the font, man? It's cool. Oh, there's like a site that you go to. I'll, uh, it's like a it's called Text Generator or something like that. I'll send you the link for it. It's neat. I like it. I don't know why we always yeah, want. Really you cool. know, it's weird. We always wind up talking about social media. On this channel, and I, it's it's so integral now to, uh, love you know, to voiceover. Yeah, I don't. I, even, I, no, <laughs> no, I don't like. Freak, I, I've never posted anything on Insta, but Lindsay's on it all the time, and I'm like, can yeah, we yeah. just fuck? Can we eat? Can we just have a meal? <laughs> can we not without, be on Instagram? Do we have to commemorate every smoothie? For Christ's sake, <laughs> <laughs> can't we just? Oh my God. I try to be good. I'll like take selfies and then I try to like limit myself, but I'm horrible. I'm, I'm probably like one of the worst cases of Instagram addiction. I won't lie. I saw, I was on your Insta, on your Insta, because that's where I got these modeling pictures from. You can't download anything. So I was like screenshotting and whatnot. Yeah. 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 You got okay. Your YouTube sucks. What happened? It was like, they're like eight year old stuff. And then it seems like you pop back up. Are you, you back on YouTube? I don't know what I'm doing with my YouTube. You know, I don't either. Tweet at me and let me know what you want on my YouTube. I don't know what I'm doing there. I'm trying to. Th- I'm thinking about going to Twitch and then starting a Patreon. Yeah. So I'm gonna abandon YouTube. Is not creator friendly at all. No. So I'm trying. I'm like trying to not do the YouTube thing. If you like more of this, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell. No, ring the bell. I don't care if anybody rings a bell. You should sub though, because we <laughs> talk to actors like this all the time. Yeah, I don't, no, I don't do any of that stuff. I do this. And I'm on Facebook because I'm at like a thousand. Yeah. Yeah, and tweeting. Well, you should just do what you enjoy and not like, that's why I don't do TikTok. I don't do Snapchat. It's just too many. There's too many platforms. There's too many things. So I like Instagram. I like Twitter. And then I'm thinking about doing Patreon. And those will maybe be my main three things. And maybe some Twitch or something. Yeah, I got to look into that Twitch thing. Yeah, Twitch is really, really It fun. used to just be the, you know, people playing games, but now they're doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah, right? you could do anything. Not like that I would want to do anything cool. wrong to YouTube, who I love very much and want them to push <laughs> my stuff, but yeah. 
Yeah. All right, Bree. Thank you. <laughs> You're awesome. Thank you for Ooh, pretty new manicure. I just got it yesterday. Ooh, I'm so look at the hands. The, so the million dollar hands. I feel like I have like Barbie nails. They're so pretty. They are. Yeah, those are some pretty damn good things, man. They're cute. <laughs> did, were you like one of those? Did you have to like walk around in like leather gloves and stuff when you were doing all like no. the hand modeling Do stuff? Do I look like a high maintenance type of girl to you? A little bit. No. Do I? No, like no, no, no. Not no. giving off the high maintenance vibes. Well, you weren't like free, you weren't doing like construction work and like picking your nose all the time. I'm sure you had to take care of them a little bit. No. 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 I'm sorry. I had to go back to the hand modeling that you started though. You were the one showing well, off. Well, no, your hands. I was just showing off because I just got my manicure can't, uh, manicure last night. So I was just like so excited about my pretty nail polish because it looks like Barbie doll pink, and I like love it. I'm freaking out. <laughs> I never get to have my nails painted, so this is a moment for me. Let, I'm I'm oh my god, it really matches my shirt. It does. Whoa, oh. it's like the same color. That's wild. I love this girl. We love you, Bray. <laughs> I love you, Bray. I'm easily distracted by shiny and pink things. Uh, oh, <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> come to Austin. You said you were coming. I know. I really, really, really want to come. Somebody, yeah. everybody, like requests me at an Austin, con, uh, Austin, Texas convention, so then I can come to Austin. Well, we're not <laughs> enough of a draw, for Christ's I'm, sake. I'm you gonna, need to get. I'm gonna send my wow. fans on a run. Yeah, yeah. All right, my do minions, it. My minions, my minions. You heard it, fans. Get her to Austin <laughs> so we can have a margarita together. Bree, thank you very much. Love you. Thank you so much for having me. Cool. Love you too. We'll talk soon, ladies and gentlemen. Bye. Bree Knickerbocker, you know her, you love her. If you didn't know her, now you know her, and now you love her. Uh, next one, I'm not sure, but we're doing another one soon, so make sure you sub, like, etc. Thank you kindly. Goodbye.